Hello, welcome to another episode of Conversations, And today we have Rob, Dr. Rob Williams. Thank you for being here. Don, so good to be with you. Yes. So you are the co co-founder of Peak Flow? Correct. Okay, we're talking breath work today, guys, and I'm so excited about it because I've done it before, but I really want to delve back in. So we're going to do a breath work session, but really quick, I wanted to ask you, like, what is the best place to start for a beginner for mm -hmm. somebody that is just hearing about this or just starting to learn about the benefits? Natural microdosing. We're going to drop into some LSD. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to do LSD, Don? Oh, I do for sure. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And as we flow, I'll maybe explain a few things as we're in the flow about LSD breathing and why it's the best place to start. And really quick too, I wanted to ask, I have heard so much about only breathing through your nose. Is that legit? Is that a thing where you should not be mouth breathing ever? Correct. What about exercise? The only time you should be mouth breathing is if you have a conscious and strategic reason to do so. Okay. Okay. And and that includes forms of exercise. Yeah, but, and I, I, I know this came up on your last conversation with breath work. Um, a lot of people I think are still sort of suggesting that we breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. At peak flow, our perspective is nasal breathing exclusively unless as I said a moment ago, you have good conscious strategic reason for mouth breathing. And there are many. And why, what is that? What is the reasoning behind that? Why is it just nose breathing? We're going to, you're going to find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can wait. I can wait. <laughs> no, well, uh, let's do a little breathing together and we'd invite uh, those listening and watching to uh, join us. And let's say, you know, 10, 10 ish minutes. What is time really? Let's just be in flow. And then we can talk about, what happened and any other things you want to talk about? Yeah, no, that sounds great. Let's do it. Cool. All right. So welcome everybody to Donversations. I love that name. But Thank so you so much. Yeah. So we'd invite you now to bring yourself into a seated position if that's comfortable for you. And uh, you can actually do this if you're driving um, and listening. Just be mindful. And... Maybe uh, bring a little sway to the hips, loosen up the shoulders, lift and lower your toes, lift and lower your heels, just kind of checking in with the body for a moment, coming into this space. And then if it feels comfortable, let's go ahead and close our eyes and shut our mouth by gently sealing our lips. And notice, as we do that, in the stillness, eyes closed, our other senses immediately start to sharpen. We call this interoception, interoception, which simply means we're going inward, into the body, yes, and also into the mind and into the spirits whatever that means for you. So we begin by observing our breath as it flows into our body through our nose. Observing our breath as it flows out of our body through our nose. Not trying to control the breath in any way, just observing. As we breathe in and out together at our own pace, recognizing that breathing is perhaps the most fundamental, the most elemental life force we have to work with, to play with. It is a secret team human superpower because we can take conscious and strategic control of our breath whenever we wish. And when we don't wish, we just keep on breathing unconsciously. It's one of the only systems in the body that has that unique ability to be switched on and off in that way. So 
Pode soltar. Não vai observar o breath flowing in e out. Recognizing we take as many as 25,000 breaths per day, inhales and exhales. Recognizing most of the human species right now, upwards of 80% of us by some scientific estimates are breathing badly. What does that mean? Suboptimally, dysfunctionally. What that means is we tend to overbreathe. Breathing through our mouth, shallow breaths into our upper chest. Rather than breathing LSD style, light and slow and deep into the diaphragm. And when we overbreathe or underbreathe, shallow mouth to chest. 25,000 breaths per day, that dysfunctional, that suboptimal breathing ripples outwards into our lives, personally and professionally, in all kinds of myriad ways. None of them positive. And the good news is we can learn, we can relearn, to take conscious and strategic control of our breath use our breath to steer us in whatever personal and professional directions we wish. Our mission at Peak Flow, inspired by nature, we optimize human potential, one breath at a time. So we'd invite you to see, imagine every breath you take as an opportunity. Every breath we take as potential. Every breath we take as a gift. 25,000 breaths per day. So let's, breathing in and out through our nose, let's take a little respiratory tour of LSD, one, two, three, breathing, light and slow and deep. You've already begun been at it now for a few minutes, breathing in and out through our nose. The first and biggest step to optimizing our breathing is to shut our mouth and breathe through our nose. The nose knows, as we like to say. Why is that? Why the nose? So with our eyes closed, feeling the air, Breathing in and out of our bodies through our nose. We're now breathing light instead of heavy through the mouth. And imagine with every inhale through our nose, see if you can even feel this with every incoming inhale. Imagine your nose slowing down that air coming in positively pressurizing that air coming in, funneling the air coming in, warming, humidifying, moisturizing every incoming breath through the nose. Imagine your nose cleaning every incoming breath, cleaning that breath of pollutants, particulates, bacteria, wait for it, viruses. And the most amazing thing about nasal breathing, at least in my mind, is when we breathe through our nose, shutting our mouths, we generate a magic molecule. It's called nitric oxide just discovered by scientific researchers in the early 1990s. It's still a bit mysterious, but we do know that nitric oxide has two magical properties. Number one, nitric oxide is a powerful antibacterial, antiviral molecule. It helps kill bacteria and viruses as we inhale 
air into our bodies. And number two, nitric oxide is a powerful, what we call vasodilator, meaning nitric oxide opens up, helps open up our entire respiratory system helps improve the flow of oxygen to our brains, sharpening our mental acuity, acuity, our cognitive capacity, a whole host of other benefits, nitric oxide. So that's simply breathing through our nose. Our nose is our body's most important respiratory organ, much underappreciated. It's not just there, our nose, to prop up our reading glasses as we age. Oh, no. Our nose is central to optimize breathing. And when we breathe through our nose, breathing light, we begin to optimize what we call in our peak flow breath training ecosystem. We call nasal breathing, breathing light. We begin to optimize breath flow or breathing biochemistry. Breathing biochemistry, the mix of respiratory gases, oxygen, yes, carbon dioxide, yes, which, by the way, is our body's most important respiratory gas, carbon dioxide. Nitric oxide, we mentioned, nitrogen. Breathing through the nose helps the chemoreceptors in our brains down into our lungs, which measure the relative alkalinity of our body's pH breath by breath. It helps those chemoreceptors to reconfigure that mix of respiratory gases to improve the efficiency of every breath. All of that simply by breathing in and out. So a little shout out of silent gratitude to the nose. Hooray for the nose. Now, continuing our tour, we breathe light. We also want to be breathing slow instead of fast. Most of us, because we're over-breathing, we tend to take too many breaths per minute, and they tend to be a little shallow. You can see and listen to people at airports. It sounds like this. We want to slow down the breath, what we call breath-mind, the psychology of breathing. Slowing down the breath has so many beautiful benefits. Let's just explore here by taking our left hand. Take your left hand and just place it over your heart. Take your right hand and just tuck your right hand just under your left center of the body. And just place your hands on your body in that way. Relax. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. We're always tensing our shoulders. So we're breathing light through the nose. We're breathing slow breath mind, the psychology of breathing by slowing down the breath. What's happening when we do this? Bring your attention now to your left hand over your heart. Imagine with every incoming exhale through your nose, see if you can feel this. Imagine with every inhale, your heart slightly expanding. And with every exhale, your heart slightly contracts. Breathing in, heart expands. And breathing out, heart contracts. Inhale, heart expands. Exhale, heart contracts. You're using your breath to bring your heart and your entire circulatory system into alignment with your breath, your entire respiratory system. And we call this beautiful conversation, this dance between the heart and the breath, we call this coherence, this dialogue, coherence. When the heart and the breath are in conversation together. And while we're here with our hearts and our breath, we're also optimizing what's called HRV, heart rate variability, our nimbleness, our heart's nimbleness to beat breath by breath, moment by moment, in accordance with whatever 
metabolic needs we have in front of us. We're running from the woolly mammoth that just jumped out of the Zoom call, or we're trying to fall asleep at night. We want our hearts to beat nimbly, variably. And the breath-heart connection, breathing slow, helps us optimize HRV and breath-heart coherence. Last stop on our tour, breathing deep. While we breathe light in and out through our nose, we breathe slow, bringing our heart and breath into alignment. And actually, before we leave, breathing slow. If you bring your awareness to your right hand, below the left, we can use our breath to rebalance our entire autonomic nervous system. Imagine now as you inhale through the nose, heart expanding. Imagine moving your nervous system slightly more alert. And with every exhale, heart contracts. Through the nose, we breathe. You're moving your nervous system slightly more relaxed. So let's try that. Feel the flow breathing in. Nervous system moves alert. And breathing out. The system moves more relaxed. Inhale, alert. And exhale and relax. And the goal, of course, is to balance the autonomic nervous system, what we call the parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems. How does this work? talk about it after, but the vagus and phrenic nerves dropping from the base to the brain are influenced by how we breathe. So breathing slow, we begin to optimize the heart breath coherence, and we begin to rebalance the nervous system, bringing it into homeostasis. And now finally, breathing deep, if we just Gently drop our hands off our body, shake them out for a moment, and then take both hands, making sure you're sitting upright, shoulders relaxed, and placing both hands on the sides of your belly, either side of your belly button. Now. Breathing deep into the diaphragm is what we call breath body. Breath body. Breathing deep into the diaphragm. And you might wish to gradually lengthen and deepen your breath here in and out through the nose for this last little portion. And with every inhale through your nose, as the heart expands, the nervous system moves more alert. With every inhale through your nose, see if you can feel your belly expanding outwards against both hands. Just try that, breathing in. And when you exhale, feel the belly relax. In, belly expands. And breathing out, belly relaxes. Keep that flow going. And what you're feeling against your hands on the inhale is your body's most powerful breathing muscle. It's called the diaphragm. It's a beautiful, it's huge, beautiful parachute-shaped muscle just below your rib cage. And when you breathe in, your diaphragm leaves its resting position, flattens down and out, pushing out the belly and bringing air all the way down on that inhale into the lower third of your lungs where it belongs. And when you breathe out, your diaphragm returns to its resting position, pushing all of the air out. We have 11 pounds of respiratory muscles in our bodies. The diaphragm is the most important. And it is a muscle. And when we don't use the diaphragm, it does weaken like any other muscle. And when we bring it back online, we can strengthen the diaphragm, which not only improves our breathing, but also optimizes functional movement, stability in our core activating the lymphatic system, which cleans toxins from our bodies. And the best thing about the diaphragm is every inhale and exhale, the diaphragm gently massages every one of our internal organs, the stomach, kidneys, spleen, the pancreas, the liver, 
and the heart. So imagine with every nasal breath in and out, as you bring the diaphragm online, you're giving your body just a little massage internally. 25,000 breaths per day. So that's how many. So take one more inhale, feeling the belly push out. And one more exhale. Belly relaxes. And very last stop on our tour now, simply slide your hands up two inches so they're on the sides of your lower ribs, keeping the shoulders relaxed. And again, with a slightly longer, deeper, wider inhale and exhale, see if you can with every inhale, feel your ribs gently widen on the inhale. Let's try that, breathing in, ribs gently widen and breathing out, ribs return, breathing in, Ribs widen, breathing out, ribs return. Keep that flow going for a few more breaths. Behind our ribs are the intercostal muscles just above the diaphragm. And along with the diaphragm, our body's most important respiratory muscles. When we are breathing light and slow and deep into the diaphragm, we bring more suppleness, more flexibility to our rib cage, which is built for such things. We bring the intercostal muscles back online with the diaphragm. So taking one more inhale, feeling the ribs slightly expand. And one more exhale, ribs contract. Now gently dropping our hands into our lap. Just a moment, shaking everything out, and let's just put it all together as we finish. Right hand on the belly, over the belly button, left hand over the heart. And now let's breathe together. We'll maybe drop in to end here, the most famous breath exercise, perhaps, thanks to our friends in the U.S. Navy at SEAL School, Coronado Island, San Diego, California, the box breath which takes all of this LSD breathing and elevates it even more by adding pauses at the top of the inhale and the bottom of the exhale. So meet me at the bottom of your next exhale in three, two, one. Inhale through the nose, two, one, and hold at the top, two, one. Exhale through the nose, two, and hold at the bottom, two, one, breathing in, and pause, and breathing out, and pause, breathing in, being sure to relax and calm and hold at the top, relax, flow, breathing out, and pause. Two more in, relax the shoulders and pause. Relax the hips, breathing out and pause. Last one in, last one hold, last one out. Last one. Now, eyes closed. Let's stay in the space just another moment. Letting go of the breath with our conscious mind, relaxing the body. Just notice how you feel. And we'll end with the fastest way we know scientifically to reset the nervous system, bring ourselves into a state of relaxed alertness. We call this the physiological sigh. I like to call it puppy breathing, because dogs do this all day long. When we take a sharp, steady inhale through the nose, and then a sip inhale at the top to fully inflate our lungs, and then breathe out through the mouth and let it all go. 
So here we go. Sharp inhale through the nose. Sip at the top. Out through the mouth. Relax the shoulders. And last one. Sharp inhale. Sip and flow. And once again, let go of the breath. It's a conscious mind. Gently dropping the hands into the lap. Observing how you feel. And when you feel ready, no rush, unless you're driving. Coming back into the space. Blinking open your eyes. That was so great. I feel like I just meditated for the first time. All the times that I have tried to meditate, I have never been able to. And I feel like that I was able to get out of my head for the most part and just let go. So that was so, great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, the central, the key to meditation and there's so much misunderstanding around this. I think the key to meditation is conscious and strategic breathing. And when you ask people to meditate, but you don't coach them in how to breathe, they're lost. Mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. You know, the monkey mind. Yes, that's what I always deal with. That first, it, it I think it was when I was expanding my heart, mm -hmm. trying to focus on picturing that that's when I lost the monkey mind. Yeah. Cause I don't know if you could hear my dog, but my dog was in here doing the breathing, breathing exercise. The whole that, time, that and that is. was distracting me. And I was <laughs> kind of like, so it's parts fun. of that, I got distracted, but other than yeah. that, picturing it's my heart fire with the animals for sure. <laughs> I know. I wish I could sleep like she does, but I also tried to not get too far in my head because I was trying to come up with like the things that you were saying. I had no idea that the diaphragm was a muscle. I had no idea about that. And then you also mentioned the nervous system regulation and homeostasis. What was it that you were saying helps with that, with the nervous system? So the vagus nerves and the phrenic nerves drop from here, from the base of the neck and they come down into our bodies and they wrap around and every one of our major organs. And they're constantly sending information upward to the brain. We have this mistaken notion that most of our cognitive activity happens from brain down to body. It's actually the reverse. It happens from the body up to the brain. And those pathways, those neural pathways that the vagus and phrenic nerves provide are constantly sending information up. So when we breathe consciously and strategically down here, right, we can sort of influence what happens up here. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I also, when the first few times when you said to let the air go or exhale, I was just so close to just breathing out of my mouth. Like that's whenever you see people doing yoga and all that there in through the nose, out through the mouth. Like that's what we've been taught for so long. Yeah. And there are strategically times to breathe out through the mouth, like the physiological sigh at the end. Um, when we exhale through the mouth, it's a way to quickly move the air out of the body and induce that state of relaxation and alertness the problem with mouth breathing is that most of us mouth breathe unconsciously which actually is governed by different um, centers within the brain than when we mouth breathe consciously it's so interesting so as we were saying earlier the only time you should be mouth breathing is when you're doing so with conscious strategic intent so you're doing a yoga flow you're in a vinyasa let's say and you bring a lion's breath. Mm -hmm. Fully exhale, just to sort of lower the stress level, kind of shake things out. 
if you're 20 minutes into a 40 minute session, you just need the lion's breath, right? And the yogis thousands of years ago figured this all out, by the way. Yoga was designed as a breath focused practice and the body positions were designed to put us in deeper touch with our breath so we could activate the flow, if you will, the mm-hmm. prana, as the yogis like to say, the pranayama, the energy work. So breath has always been central to yoga and our fixation in the modern yogic world with body positions, downward dogs and Vishnu warriors and et cetera, um, I think takes away from at least half the fun of yoga, which is the breath work. Mm-hmm. And I think more and more yogis are kind of returning. They've kind of recognized this. I, I do a lot of yoga. I have a lot of friends we're in the yoga community. We train a lot of yogis in our peak flow breath work ecosystem. And it's interesting observing yogis teach because the really the, the best ones bring awareness to the breath as part of the flow. Mm-hmm. Like it all goes together. It so does. what what got you down this path and then to open your own peak flow? Like what what prompted all of that? Yeah, so I discovered the Wim Hof method uh, when I turned 50 years old, and I was sort of like, okay, I'm halfway through my life, and I've been a teacher for 30 years, and I'd like to continue to learn and grow and maybe teach some new things, and I kind of stumbled into the Wim Hof method, and then I met our Peak Flow co-founder, Lindsay Trubia, out in San Diego. We met at a Wim Hof five-day instructor training in the winter of 2021, it was the height of the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. And 20 of us in North America said to the Hoffice, they do call it the Hoffice in the Netherlands, we know you're shut down for COVID, but there are 20 of us willing to sign whatever legal documents you wish so we can complete our training here in North America. And to their credit, they made it happen. So Lindsay and I were buddied up and by the third day, we totally hit it off. And by the third day, she's sharing this idea with me for this, what she called this breathwork training ecosystem. I said, tell me about that. She said, Rob, imagine if we could train individual humans to drop into a specific breathwork practice for whatever personal and professional challenges or goals they had in front of them. So imagine, Don, arrows in your quiver. And you pull out the right breathwork arrow for the right moment. And then you put it back in. And then you pull out the next one. And you put it back in, right? So if you're having trouble sleeping, which 90% of us are, there's certain breathwork protocols that you can drop right into, including what we just did. LSD breathing is great for optimizing sleep. Most people who are having trouble sleeping sleeping are breathing here through their mouth. Um, So nipping that in the bud is as we say, the biggest first step. So the Peak Flow Breath Training Ecosystem is a 24-7 applied breathwork ecosystem. It's not lying down on a mat for 15 minutes every morning and doing Wim Hof breathing. It's not, and this is no offense to the yogis, it's not getting on your yoga mat and breathing for 40 minutes and then calling it a day and then going out into your chronically stressful life without any understanding of how to access the breath as a suite of tools for optimizing personal and professional performance. It is a, what Lindsay calls a lifestyle approach to breathing. Right? And I will tell you, when you begin to access the breath all day, every day, when you develop a more conscious and strategic awareness of how just to drop into it when you need it, it's pretty transformative. And it's so mind blowing to me that it's something that we just do all day long. <laughs> And it can be so beneficial if we do it the right way. So yeah. what was it that the Navy SEALs, how, why did they come up with box breathing? What was all that about? So let me brag for a moment. My nephew, Jamie, for whom traditional schooling wasn't really his bag, enrolled in U.S. Navy SEAL school in BUDS training. And, you know, 200 plus of them go in and two dozen come out. And he was one of the ones who came out. So we're very proud of him. And I asked him, I said, all right, so is it true, Jamie? What's the first thing they teach you at U.S. Navy SEALs BUDS training? And he said, box breathing. I I said, okay, so why? He said, because we drop into the box 
whenever we're feeling any sort of stress personally, professionally, we're, you know, we're putting the weapon together, we're, you know, they've thrown us into the water again, right, for the 10th time today, and we've got to do some crazy thing to get ourselves, you know, out of this precarious situation. The box breath brings you to that state of relaxation, of calm, alertness, and um, really helps you focus. That is so fascinating. Yeah. So I don't know how, how much you follow the bro podcasting community, but, you know, guys like Andrew Huberman and Tim Ferriss and Joe Rogan. Yep. And Aubrey Marcus and Chris Williamson and all those guys, um, you know, who are all interfacing with, you know, the U.S. military all the time as part of the research and training. And they're all huge proponents of the box breath. Um, but to get it, get it out of my nephew's mouth, like out of the horse's mouth was pretty great. Yeah. So does it help with the immune system? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about what's going on in the body, um, most of us, we, we're all subject to chronic stress, which is distress, right? Mm -hmm. And that's people beyond our control. And when we mouth breathe our way through chronic distress, we're simply amplifying dis-ease, anxiety, fear. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, of course, has, that impacts every living system in our body, including the immune system. So when we learn how to lean into what we call hormetic stress, voluntary stress, which is what the Wim Hof method breath breathing is, is based on, this biological concept that we can voluntarily lean into stress in measurable doses with recovery to build resilience of body, mind, and spirit. Anytime we go to the gym, we lift weights, we get on a bike, we go for a walk, we go for a hike, we swim, whatever, yoga. We're inducing voluntarily stress into the mind and the body and the spirit, and then we recover. And what happens? We get stronger. We become more resilient. So hormetic stress, voluntary stress, is the key to optimizing one's life, biologically speaking. Like every living, every living thing induces voluntary stress to become bigger, stronger, faster, whatever so yes the immune system the circulatory system the lymphatic system the respiratory system obviously the circulatory system right our cognitive capacities all of all of these are improved by a regular breath work training regimen and the beautiful thing don is it doesn't take any extra time to learn how to just optimize your breath in flow during your day it's like you could be at your standing desk sitting desk out doing field work, whatever you do, it's an opportunity to breathe better. Yeah, that's makes it very tangible. So um, tell people how they can find you. So we're at thepeakflow.com. If you go onto the app store for either Android or Apple, you can download our Peak Flow Breath Training app and you'll find there a whole, gosh, a whole suite of breath training exercises for work, for play, for motherhood, for fatherhood, um, for stress, for anxiety, for optimizing your fitness and sports game. And we do have a Peak Flow Breath Training Academy, uh, our Peak Flow Practitioner Academy. So we do train up humans to certify with us and then teach breath training professionally and earn money doing what they love. And we have a level one, which is what we call the case self-study and becoming a pulmonaut, a <laughs> an explorer of the breath, Dawn, like astronauts explore space, pulmonauts explore the breath. Oh, I love that. I'm a huge fan of that name. <laughs> pulmonaut, yes. And we, and we borrowed that from our good friend, James Nestor, uh, who's written the book on breath, breath, the new science of a lost art, which okay. uh, dropped three years ago during the COVID. And, um, he's become a good friend and, um, and we use this book in our level one training. So it's eight weeks of Monday nights online recordings for those who have to work. And then a month of uh, studying for our final exam, doing a case study. We recommend doing it on yourself. So you actually learn how to become a pulmonaut and optimize your breathing in your life. And then people are like, oh, I want to teach that. That was fun. They, <laughs> they, they flow into level two. Yeah. Do you feel healthier or better than you did before you turned 50? Like since you started doing all this, you feel younger, better? I've never felt better. 
That's phenomenal. I felt better. And that's not to say my life isn't stressful. Of course, um, we're all subject to chronic stress. You know, it's a very strange time. I'm sure you've noticed for, <laughs> uh, for what I call team human. It's a strange world. Yeah. Out there. And the breath work training, the breath play training really makes a huge difference in how not just we individually, but I think we as a species flow together. And maybe this is a good ending point. I, I always like, because I'm a bit of a, of a word geek, I always like to point out that the Latin root of the English word breath is the Latin spira or spiritus, spirit. And you find spira at the core of so many of our powerful English words. The word inspire means literally to breathe good energy into. Think about wow. when you inspire someone or you are inspired by someone else, what's happening there? Good energy is being exchanged, right? When we, my favorite, when we conspire, conspiracy, what is a conspiracy? It gets kind of a bad rap these days, but when you conspire with others, you are breathing together for a strategic purpose. That's what a conspiracy is, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, of course, a conspiracy can, it's often painted as a negative, but you know, my advice to people is like, if you aren't in a conspiracy, get in one because there's magic happening there. <laughs> Whether it's your family, you're conspiring, right? What are you doing with a family? You're breathing together all day long, right? It right. Yeah. Our, or your work or whatever it may be. And then when we aspire, what are we doing? We're breathing our way upwards. We're aspiring. We're breathing our way upwards to sort of a higher goal or vision when we aspire. And we're doing all of this done as events transpire, which means we're breathing across time and space together, right? Yeah. And yeah, of course, we're spiritual. We are spiritual creatures. What does that mean? We are breath-filled creatures. So when we become conscious and aware of our breathing, we can actually bring more energy to mind and body and spirits and project that outward into the world. I love that. What a great message. That's phenomenal. Oh, thank you. Well, it's been, I wish I had discovered it in my twenties, Don. <laughs> well, you got, but you I'll did discover it. it. That's all that matters. Right. I'll and you're it. passing on your information, which is that it's priceless. I mean, you're mm -hmm. giving a gift to people that maybe are in their twenties or thirties and didn't know about this. You're giving them a chance to learn about it. I think that's great. Well, thank you. We are, we are building our peak flow community and all are invited and, um, We'd invite you to join us as you wish. And it's been so nice talking with you. I, I hope we can do this again. Yeah, I'd love to have you back. Thank you so much. And uh, we will definitely be in touch. Yeah, you're most welcome. Enjoy the rest of your week. As we like to say, breathe and flow and be well. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.